So I want to talk about, uh, talk about something that uh, I had a great message. In fact, if you go to our website, which you don't have to put it up there, Kat. I'm pointing as if our website was up there. I had a great message for tonight, in all humility, of course. It's, uh, it was called the, uh, um, the Logic of Fear. And you can find it on the church website under where the blog is, blogs are. And uh, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a, a very interesting uh, way to look at fear. I'll, I'll talk really briefly about that. Okay, let's say, how many people here, show of hands, how many people here have whatever they were afraid of had it actually happened to them? Okay, okay, let me ask you this. Okay, how many people have, say, okay, 50% of the time, something you were afraid of happened to you? Okay, 49% of the time. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to go to 10. <laughs> okay, let's say 49% of the time, what you were afraid of happened to you. Anybody? Now, I could go, I could, of course, it's, it's down to next to nothing. But, but let's, let's say this, okay. If it's 49% of the time, what you were afraid of didn't happen to you, then... Chances are, if you're trying to look at things percentage-wise, that it's not going to happen to you. What you're afraid of is not going to happen to you. Okay, I mean, it's 50-50. You say, well, it could, it might, it might not. But if it's 49%, and we, I mean, we didn't go, I mean, really, it's probably about, what do you, what do you think? 2%, 2% of the things maybe that you fear actually happen. So why don't people say, you know, why, why don't people say, chances are it's not going to happen to me? You know, why do they let fear say, oh, but it might? You know, and, 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 the, and as you look at the other way, I'm not speaking on this side, but it was so interesting to me, you know. Um, it's like gambling. How often do people win at gambling? Seriously, I mean, if they won all the time, then there would be no gambling uh, business. You know, so, so when you go, to, let's say that you go to gamble, you say, chances are I'm going to lose. Okay? And so, so, so that's what logic says. Logic has to do with current circumstances. It doesn't have to do with, well, this makes sense. It has to do with your current circumstance. And I'm, 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 I'm going to preach that another time, Maybe. Uh, I'll just, uh, here's, an, here's an example. Uh, the, uh, uh, there's a college student that, uh, in a class, they were supposed to write a report on an, an innovative idea that they had. Okay, and, and so this one college student, what they wrote on was the ability to deliver packages overnight using airplanes. And they got an F on it. Okay, they got an F on it because in, in the... Uh, um, the professor wrote on the paper, F, that the idea at least has to be plausible. And so you know what happened? The person, the student that wrote that page, the person that started FedEx. You know, at that particular time, because of the circumstances and everything else, logic said it couldn't happen. But see, that was, that was then. You know, so logic is a, and men are logical, aren't we, Pastor? <laughs> aren't we guys? Aren't we logical? But uh, uh, logic, uh, you can't base things on logic. And fear and logic uh, have a relationship, which if you go read my blog there, you'll find out more about it. But we're not going to talk about that right now. So I just want to encourage you. I, I, I found it fascinating myself. So uh, tonight I wanted to talk about uh, um, uh, what happened is I was going to speak on that until yesterday, and then I felt I needed to speak on something else. So I switched, and so now we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, when I was growing up in the uh, 60s, of course, uh, they had what was known as variety shows. Do you guys know what variety shows are? 
Okay, variety shows are where you'd have one show, and on the show they'd have a singer, they'd have a dancer, they'd have a comedian, they'd have a performing dogs. You know, they'd have all sorts of things to entertain everybody. And, uh, uh, of course, they don't have that anymore. But uh, uh, the, the, the most well-known variety show, of course, was Ed Sullivan Show on Sunday nights. And uh, so we have a clip from, uh, um, which is the subject of my message, from the Ed Sullivan Show back in the 60s. There's a, um, a pastor, a reverend, and his wife just bought the th her, a third dress that week. Okay, so if you could start it again, can you do that? It's funny how times change, huh? I mean, that was, uh, that was broadcast, I think, probably all around the world. On, you know, Sunday night when everybody was at home uh, um, after church. That was, uh, that was uh, top-grade uh, uh, humor, but he was talking about the church. He was talking about important things, but uh, he was kind of making fun of them. Uh, but uh, so I want to, I want to show that because everything I'm going to talk about from here on in is serious. <laughs> now, what happens is, uh, um, you know, let's let's. I think her name was Geraldine. Yeah, yeah. Geraldine uh, didn't have a problem with the devil. You know, she uh, she had a problem with herself. You know, and she's blaming it on the devil. But uh, uh, in our lives, we've got to deal with the devil, we've got to deal with ourselves, and we've got to figure out who's causing the problem. Okay, see, people blame things on the devil when it's your own problem. And oh, let me say this. When I said I needed to say this message, it doesn't mean that I'm, <laughs> it's for any one of you in particular. <laughs> um, so anyways... So uh, the three main adversaries to keeping us from being overcome covers in this life is the world, the flesh, and the devil. Okay, so some people say, well, I don't know if I believe in the devil. Well, okay, pick and choose what you're going to believe in and have, enjoy yourself. But you know, when you have a problem, you're going to have to need to know who you're going to who you need to talk to. Are you going to have to talk to God? Okay. And, or you're going to have to talk to uh, somebody, a person. You're going, to, you're going to have to talk to But you might have to talk to the devil. Okay. You say, oh, well, I don't know if I, I, how can I talk to him when I don't believe in him? Well, when things get bad enough and you find out, you know, actually who's been uh, um, causing you all the problems, you're going to start talking to him. Okay. We need to recognize is it the world, is it the flesh, or is it the devil that's trying to influence us so we can take our stand with the Word of God uh, so we can have victory in, in whatever these areas are? Example. Let's say you're having a problem with, uh, with uh, uh, watching too many soap operas. You know, you, see, you, you can't miss your soap opera. You know, and then you... Uh, and I, don't turn on me now. Okay, let's change it. Let's say it's pornography. Let's say somebody has a problem with pornography. You know, who is the problem with? Is it the devil? It's your flesh. You know, your flesh wants to do what it wants to do. Let's say, um, let's say there's a... You have an opportunity to eat as much food as you want at a uh, um, at a buffet. You know, your flesh says, "Eat as much as you want." You know, um, yeah, nobody can stop you. You paid for it. Go ahead, do it. But what happens is we need to say to say to ourselves, "What what are these influences on me?" What are, you know, and let, or let's say um, somebody offers you a, a possibility of uh, making some money. But uh, you, know, you might have to, uh, ha might have to sell some uh, stolen merchandise. You know, so you say, so oh, I would never do something like that. But what happens if you need money? What, what happens if you don't have any other offers? 
you know, there's all sorts of, there are influences and we have to assign, you know, what's causing me to do this? Is it the devil? Not yet. You, <laughs> um, but if you say, okay, tell me about that, uh, uh, that enterprise you have where I can sell, sell some stolen merchandise or I can uh, work in a, a call center, you know, getting people to, uh, um, you know, uh, pay for uh, uh, antivirus software that they, that, uh, to try to get onto their computer. You know, what happens is if you give in to the flesh, if you give, give in to the, uh, um, the world, the desire for money, the desire for position, any of those kind of things, what happens is then you're letting yourself in for the devil. And, w and when he gets you uh, to do what he says, then all of a sudden, you know, it's not a problem with your flesh. Then you have a problem with the devil. Anyways, so we have to take a definite stand against any, whichever one of these. In fact, there's a close connection between the three. We yield to fleshly lust or cater to the ways of the world. We are giving a place to the devil. And what does it say? Um, I, I think it was uh, Ephesians 4. It said, it said, be angry and sin not. Neither give a place to the devil. Why is that? Because you can get all angry, and, and if you don't watch yourself, because of your anger, you can, uh, you can open the door for the devil. You give him a place. So, so he feels, okay, well, I can talk to this person now. Yeah. And uh, what happens if the devil starts talking to you? What comes? What happens? Well, there's lies, but also there's stress. What else is there? There's, there's, there are, um, there's uneasiness, there's tension, there's um, uh, mistrust. There's all sorts of things because the devil's talking to, to a person who will listen. And we could go back in, uh, uh, in fact, I think in that other message I was talking about, I talked about, you know, that's what uh, Satan did for, to, to Adam and Eve. So what do we do? Uh, number one, we can't let our guard down uh, or become passive in any ways towards, you know, the world coming in, the flesh coming in, because we don't want the devil to come in. But it's up to us to keep the devil out. So if, if there's, a, there's some kind of a, a temptation, what do we do? I say we must take the reverse action. Okay, so let's... Uh, we all have situations. I'll, I'll just keep going with this because I don't want to uh, worry out making you think, is he talking about me? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Okay, what does it, uh, now let's deal with, with uh, the world. Uh, let's look at Galatians 6.14. So the, when something comes up, we have got to know what, we have to, what we're going to deal with. It. it says, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. So what does, that, what does crucified mean? Killed? Anything else? Means impa impaled on a, like with a knife or on a, on a pole or something, you know, being pierced. Okay, so the world has to be pierced to us. So, um, so when, the, when the situations come up, uh, let's say currently, the economy, you know, the stuff that's on the news, you know, um, are you going to, uh, are you going to make decisions because of what you see on the news? You know, you have to decide for yourself, you know, and if there's peace, you know, that's because the, the spirit of peace is in you by, uh, by God. I mean, God puts, gives us the Holy Spirit. But if it's tension, if it's stress, if it's anxiety, you know, it's, the words of the enemy. So the one thing that you do is you say, okay, I don't want, I don't care about making a zillion dollars if I've got to cheat people. You just say it. You got to say it out loud. I don't care, you know, if I can make a whole bunch of money, you know, by, by, having, a, uh, by having a men's nightclub. Or I don't care if I can make a whole bunch of money by selling Bitcoin, you know, uh, on the Internet and scamming people. 
See, that's what, when it talks about the world, a lot of times it's the Babylonian system, which is, which is the, you can't love God, serve God, and serve mammon. And mammon is not just a, a term for money. Mammon is the spirit. It's the, uh, it's the spirit of, of uh, the world system. It's the God of the world system. It's got a, if you notice, it has a big M. It doesn't say God and mammon with a small. It's a big M because mammon is his name. So you've got to say, no, I'm not going to serve you, mammon. Okay, and okay, let's go to the flesh. So what do you do with the flesh? Well, you, we crucify the world. The world is crucified to us. In other words, the world is dead to us, and we're dead to the world, and they don't want you anyways. You know, I mean, you've got to promote the world to, uh, I used to say a long time ago, um, I said, you want to be, I was telling my guitar students, do you want to be famous? I said, yeah. They said, oh, yeah, you know. I said, just dye your hair blue. You know, and uh, um, dress really outrageously, and you, you'll, you'll start getting jobs all over the place. And I said that, you know, it's kind of to poke at him, but it's the truth. You know, when the world likes what they like, I mean, all you, okay, if you're a guy, dress up like a girl. You know, if you're a girl, dress up like a guy. You know, the, the world will love you if you do that. I mean, it's just the way it is. Okay, the next one is the flesh. Okay, let's see what Galatians uh, 5, 24. And they that are Christ have what? Crucify the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Okay, so those are those things that you, you know you shouldn't do, but then you kind of decide to yourself, well, it's all right. You know, um, it's like a, <laughs> there's another Flip Wilson uh, thing there where he said, uh, um, where actually they have a guy playing the devil. And, and he said, uh, uh, he said, what's wrong with the little sin? He said, there's, he said, there's, uh, he said, there's wine. And he goes, there's, uh, no, there's cigarettes and there's whiskey and there's wild, wild women. And uh, uh, then uh, Flip Wilson comes along as the as preacher said, now look. Um, he said, we don't want to have anything to do with cigarettes and whiskey. <laughs> you know, and then the devil said, what about the wild women? He, and then Flip also goes, you can't give everything up. You know, but see, that's just it. You know, that, that's, that's what the world says. He doesn't say that, you know, okay, you get messed, with, messed up with, with a wild, wild woman, and what happens to you? There goes your life, brother. You know, there goes your finances. There goes your family. There goes your job. There goes all that stuff. And, and you say, oh, you just want to keep me from having fun. <laughs> no, I, I want to keep you from, I want to keep you having fun. You know, and it doesn't have anything to do with any of that stuff. So they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. So are there things that you have to say in your, if you see something, you know, uh, I remember when I uh, first got saved in, uh, uh, you know, we would go to, uh, uh, Ruth and I would stop at the 7-Eleven, and behind the 7-Eleven, you know, there'd be, there'd, there'd be all these magazines, you know, and when I was in the world, you know, I looked at whatever I wanted to look at, but, you know, after, after, after I got saved, you know, I'd go into 7-Eleven, and I'd say, well, uh, let me have a Slurpee, and I, because I, I wanted to keep myself from looking at things I shouldn't be looking at, you know, and, uh, um, so let's go to Colossians 3, 2. Okay, this is what we need to do. Why? To have a good life. Nobody's trying to keep anybody from fun. Okay, let's, uh, let's read this together. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Okay? Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Let me stop, stop, stop. Right, go back. Does anybody know what mortify means? Does everybody know what mortify means? Well, mortify means um, to make like a corpse. Like, you know, morticians are people that take care of, you know, or the people whose job it is to, Prepare a dead person's body. It means make your body. That's why the Bible is so great with the words that it uses. Make your body like a dead body. 
uh, so mortify, in other words, make it dead, um, your, uh, your members which are upon the earth, and then there, there are these, all these things that people do, and you, you, don't, you say, well, I don't do them, but people do them, so when you, do, when you talk to people or you have to deal with people, know that people do these things. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence. What about the evil concupiscence, Pastor? Isn't the, isn't the Bible great? They use this, these, these words, that you, you know, we all should look up and know what it means. Concupiscence, of course, is evil desire or, or um, uncontrollable desire for things. You know, like, she's going to be my girlfriend or die. You know, or, and people are like that. They're crazy. Okay, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness is what? It's like wanting something that doesn't belong to you. Wanting somebody else's, uh, what's a good another, uh, not selfishness, what's another good word for that? Well, covetousness, in fact, covetousness is so bad, it's one of the Ten Commandments, you know, not to covet, and it gives you a list of what not to covet, because it's idolatry, it's putting things before God. Okay, keep going. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, and it's their own fault. You know, people that choose something besides God, are, are, I mean, they, they're going to have to pay, and I'm, I feel bad about it. I feel terrible about it. In which you also walked sometimes when you lived in them. See, so this was being explained to Christians. That's why we're talking about it in church. You know, these people that had these, these problems, the, these people that had these um, uh, this, this, this fight against the flesh, the, the stuff, the, the fight against the world, they were Christians. I mean, they had it back when they were in the world, but it, you, did you know, have you ever noticed that when Jesus was casting out uh, uh, demons in church? I mean, that's, I mean he, that's where he was at. He was in church, and the, and the people that get, got demons cast out of them were believers. God bless you. Okay. So uh, let's keep going here. Okay, and Romans 8, 12. This is my favorite scripture because God spoke it one time into my heart when I tried to figure out what's going on about, you know, how do I control my, my desires uh, before I met my wife. Okay, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. In other words, we owe something, but not to the flesh. Why? Why don't we owe anything? Why don't we need to, uh, if it feels good, do it? Why don't we need to take drugs, you know, um, or take uh, pre prescription medicine when we're feeling bad? At least uh, we don't have to think about all of our other problems. No, because if we live after the flesh, you shall die. Okay, what does it mean, die? You'll be separated from God. You'll be all about yourself. It's all that'll matter to you, and you'll, you won't have any hope. Because once you, once you get to the end of yourself, just like the, uh, the prodigal son, when he was in, the, when he was in the, the, uh, the pig pen, he came to himself. And it, what happens at, at the end, uh, uh, he was separated, then, but wait, look. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, what does mortify mean? I just told you. Make it like a dead body. Make it like a, a mortician, like a, like a cadaver. No, maybe not cadaver. Or what's that? Um, embalmed. Okay. If you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the, the body, you shall live. Oh, look. You can mortify the deeds of the body. You can cause your body not to do the things that it wants to do. How do you do that? Through the Spirit. So how does that happen? How does the Spirit uh, cause you to make your body dead? Anybody know? Okay, let's look at, uh, um, uh, I'll tell you in just a second. Oh, I had it, I'm sorry. I, I don't have it on my, my iPad. Could you turn, or could you pull up uh, Jude? It only has one chapter. I think it's, Verse 20, uh, but ye, beloved, building yourselves up. Okay? You build yourselves up. So how do you mortify the deeds of the, the flesh? 
Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. How? Ho, ho, ho. Praying in the Holy Spirit. So when, you, when you're facing the world or the flesh, you know, God says there's something, there's a way for you to mortify the deeds of the flesh. You know, in other words, make your body dead. Okay, how do we do it? Building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So, if we are not praying in the Holy Ghost, you know, we have, uh, um, we're, we're driving on fumes. We are, we are exercising, but have not had any meal. Any, we haven't had any food. Praying in the Holy Ghost builds yourself up. So when, you have, when, so that when there's fear, praying in the Holy Ghost will cause the fear of the things in the future, etc. You know, because your faith counteracts the fear. Praying in the Holy Ghost will take away uh, that, that battle, it caused you to win the battle. Okay, so uh, I got I to uh, speed up here. Okay, let's... Uh, uh, okay, I'm just, I'll go to the next part. Don't worry about Second Colossians. Okay, the, the two main hindrances for deliverance is or are failure to forgive and repentance. Okay, uh, these have, both these things have nothing to do with your feelings. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. You know, or your emotions. Oh, I made such a fool of myself. Oh, God, how can you do uh, I mean, how, how can you even talk to me? You know, I'm such a worm. You know, uh, uh, when, it, uh, when it comes to repentance, it's something you decide that you're not going to do again. Okay, it's not, it has nothing to do with feelings. It's a decision. When you have to forgive somebody, it's, well, they talk nice to me, so I'm going to forgive them. You know, that, that's not the way it works. You just, what we are, as Christians, as the body of Christ, we have to decide that we're going to forgive, and that's, and, and that's, that's how it happens. We, now, if you decide you're going to forgive and then you don't forgive, you know, I, that's kind of embarrassing. Um, if you decide that you're going to repent and then you don't really repent, you know, how do you think God feels about any of those things? Uh, well, he's watching. Okay, so repentance is a choice. It's a matter of the will. It's the decision. Okay, but so Mark eleven twenty six says what? Mark eleven twenty six says what? It's the next one on the, on the thing there. But if you do not forgive, uh-oh, this is serious. Is he talking to uh, people in the world? No. He's talking to us. Everybody say he's talking to me. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. That's serious. Okay, now, what happens if you decide you're not going to forgive? You give a place to the devil. And the devil can do whatever he want, whatever he, you let him do. Okay? So, first of all, you're not forgiving. You're, let, you're letting him in. You're letting him talk to you. You're listening to him. You know, you're, you're deciding, just like Adam and Eve, they're deciding, we're not going to believe what God said. We're going to believe what the devil said. Okay? Now, so, there's a book uh, by Derek Prince. It's called They Shall Expel Demons. And uh, it's a great book. And, but what happens is when people get, get um, they've given a place to the devil and the devil gets in, okay, there's a way out. And I, I wanted to make sure I, I ended here with good news here. Uh, and, and I would recommend this book to, to everyone. Uh, uh, it's, start with step one. We're just going to go through this real fast. So, okay, let's say, let's say you even have a health problem and you think it might be a spiritual problem. You know, you're not sure, you know, you prayed, you, didn't, you haven't gotten healed, you've, you've done all you could do and, and, uh, um, and you want to know if it's a spiritual problem or not. What happens is you can go through these steps and, and see God's deliverance if it is a spiritual problem. Okay, 
So let's start with step number one. You got that? Okay. So personally affirm your faith in Christ. I have, let, me, let me say this. I do this myself. I have done it. I do it when I need, need to do it. Okay. So let's say I have a problem. I'm saying, okay, God, there's something in my body that's not right. You know, if it's a spirit, okay, well, first you have to understand that if there's, let's say, alcohol, alcoholism has been in your family for generations, that there might be something that you have to, you're going to have to deal with. Okay, and if that's the case, you can go through these steps. You say, Jesus, you know, you're my Savior. I believe you're the Son of God, and I'm going to go through all these steps because I'm, I don't want any spiritual problem you know, causing me a problem in my body or in my mind or in my emotions. Okay, and then you humble yourself. You talk to God and you say, God, you can deliver me. Yeah, I, uh, I can't deliver myself. Uh, show me what to do, God. Tell me what to do. I'll do whatever you say, God, because it's your will and not my will be done. Okay, then you confess any known sins. See, people, there's a lot of people that don't do that. You know, they think, oh, well, I'm okay, yeah, yeah, I... Uh, um, I stole that little thing, but, you know, God understands. I just need this. No, if you stole something, you need to confess that you stole something. You don't have to have to, you know, call up the, new, the newspaper or anything. Like that. Oh, do they have newspapers anymore? Call up, the, call up the local TV station and confess. No, you just have to confess to God, you know, uh, that, that you did something you did wrong. You know, and then you, you have to, you got to repent. You've got to turn, turn away from whatever it is that you've done wrong. Now, as you do these things, and as these things come up, you say, some, sometimes you remember something that, you know, somebody did to you a long time ago, and you're still not forgiving them. So you say, God, I, I have unforgiveness in my heart. God, I turn away from that, Lord God. What can I do? What do I need to do? You know, God might say, or you might hear in your spirit, you know, you better, why don't you call him up? <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to call him up. But I do forgive him. <laughs> no, you got to do what God says. Okay, let's go. Oh, forgive all other people. And I do the same thing. When I had a problem, I had uh, uh, my, uh, in my knee and in my uh, ankle, I had, the, I had this real bad pain. I said, I said, well, I'm going to do this, and this is what I did. And I went through, and I said, God, I forgive. And I thought about, who, is, who do I need to forgive? You know, who did me wrong? And I remembered people, and I said, I forgive them. Lord, I forgive them, because I don't want the devil to have any place in my body. I said, oh, and break with any occult or all false religion. This, that, like I said, that might go to, you know, somebody in your family or whatever was involved with uh, false religion. You don't know if that's affecting you or not. If you don't know that, you know, why not just say, God, if it's there, show me. If not, Lord, I, I turn away from it. You know, and I say it has no place in my life or in my family's life. You so at least you, you're, you're covering your bases there. Prepare to be released from every curse over your life. You know, if you, gotta, if you can't find a job, you know, you got to say, God, when I come out of this, I'm not only am I going to have a job, I'm going to have a job where I'm over other people. You know, I'm not only going to have a job, I'm going to have a job that they like me and I like going there. You know, so, so, um, so you have to speak out to what, it, what it is that uh, the devil's telling you the opposite of. Okay? And then take your stand with God. Say, God... Yeah. it's you and me, and, you just, and I said this, and so I prayed all these things, and then I expelled, and then I went like this, and I said, I said, spirit, I said, if this is a spirit in my leg, I said, God knows whether it is or not, I said, I command you pain, this, this soreness in my knee and in my ankle, you go for me in the name of Jesus, you know, I command you to go, I don't know if you guys do that or not, okay, you know, but I commanded it to go, and then, it, strangely enough, I moved like this, and I had no pain. And then I thought, that must have been a spirit. I mean, how else can you have pain and then have it gone like that? Anyways, so, uh, so we're finishing up right now. So we have to learn to discern what our influence are and where they're coming from. Is it from the flesh, the world, or is it the devil? We must address them in both word and deed. 
You can't say one thing and do another one. You know, if, you're, uh, if you need to pray about a situation, you can't watch TV and pray. I guess you all know that. Okay, we must take our stand and never budge. We must always consider the consequences of failure to act. Say, is that up there? Yeah. Look, take our, uh, address both word and deed. Okay, take our stand, go. Consider the consequences of failure to act. That's so important. Everybody say, I'm going to consider the consequences if I fail to act. Okay, you, we ought to, the next one ought to be go back and re, read the previous one because that's so important that, that you, can, you say to yourself, if I don't do this, you know, worse things are going to, are going to happen to me because there's, there's only one fight and that's the fight that we win. Okay, oh, then the last one's great. Hey, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. I'm strong in the Lord when I am fighting the good fight. I'll keep standing, standing on the rock. I gotta keep standing on the promises he gave us. Okay, last one. Uh, Ephesians 10, 6, 10. It says, finally, my brother, finally, <laughs> you've done it. You, you've gone through the whole list. Now just be strong in the Lord, and it's his power that does it. It's not how much you confess. It's not how many good deeds you've done. It's not whether or not you've tithed to the church. It's not that whether you've done any of that other kind of stuff. It's the power of his might. That's why, you know, if people think that God's going to give them spiritual gifts because they're so holy, that's not why he does it. It's a gift. What's a gift? A gift you give, you give it to you. You don't earn a gift, okay? And, and the, but we, this is what we need to do. We need to put on the whole armor of God that we're able to stand against the wilds of who? The devil. Now, so that's the problem with Geraldine. See, she wasn't standing against the wilds of the devil. She was agreeing with it. You know, and then, and then her husband. Why doesn't the devil do anything for me? You know, it's... That's, uh, that wasn't the reason why I gave this message, but uh, you understand that people need to know that, that the devil is their enemy. You know, that you get nothing good. You know, cigarettes and whiskey and wild, wild women is, uh, yeah, is, is temptation that you have to resist. Yeah, and, uh, and, and what happens is after you resist, I tell you what, the great, one of the greatest days, and I'm, this, I'm closing with this, is was the day I realized that if I never ha if I never tell a lie, I'll I never have to worry about it. And so I I don't know how long ago it got probably I think after I married my wife, <laughs> I uh, um, I just I stopped telling lies and life has been great. I feel and and if that possibility comes up where I think oh yeah you know, I'll just I could just tell a little lie here I said no you better not tell a lie. You know, you're, you got such a great record. You know, look at, this, look at the consequences. You tell this lie, what if they catch you? You know, what, what happens if your wife catches you? <laughs> One time we were on a, a plane, and I promise this is the last thing. One time we were on a plane in, uh, um, after we got married, and uh, we went to the Cayman Islands, and they, had, uh, uh, they said, would you like some punch? <laughs> and, you know, I'd been, I'd been a Christian probably two years, probably something like that. I said, sure. So we had a punch, and Ruth was sitting next to me, and I went, you know, whoa. This punch was uh, from, uh, um, this, this was Island Punch. You know? And I sat there, and I thought, should I say something to her? She won't know. You know? But, 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 but you know, I, I the, so, so I went, and I, I said to the, um, the stewardess or whatever, I said, I'm sorry. This is, this is alcoholic punch, you know, and, and I gave it back. But I knew the consequences. <laughs> yeah, my wife said, you want to go to the moon? <laughs> Anyways, so um, I, hope, uh, I hope we all could uh, reflect and get something out of my message here. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you for, the, for church. God, we thank you for the church. We thank you for church. 
We thank you for fellow believers. We thank you for the family of God. We thank you for divine wisdom that comes from you, Lord God, from your word. We thank you, God, that you look after your word and cause things to come to pass because we believe in your word. We trust in your word. We're strong in you and your word, Lord God. And as we get stronger, Lord, I, I thank you that we will help people all over this city. We'll make a difference to people in this city. We'll make a difference to people in our families, in our neighborhoods. And we'll make a difference because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we can show forth. We can, we can be strong in you, Lord God. and make it